Texas, weighing 167.8 pounds. He's an independent fighter from Phoenix, Arizona. Introducing Omar the Prince Ali. Okay, well, uh, you know, I'll start by saying uh, I used to lie to people when I was a kid and tell them I was Muhammad Ali's grandson, but that's not true. Uh, my dad, uh, my dad was born uh, with a different name, and he converted to Islam and changed his last name to Ali before I was born. So that's how I got the last name Ali. Um, you know, if he didn't become a Muslim, I would be a Jones. So you got Ali. My first name is Omar. Uh, my dad wanted it to be Umar, which is more common over there in the Middle East. Um, but my mom was smart. She beat him to the birth certificate and made it Omar with the O. And um, it works. It just works way better because I've even, my dad still tries to call me Umar. I've even tried to tell people when I was younger and it just, it doesn't work. Um, I mean, we live in Arizona. I love Mexican people, but Mexicans cannot say Umar. They did. I tell them Umar, and they'd be like, Omad. And I'm like, yeah, sure. That's, uh, I'll go with Omar. And uh, But it ended up working out for me, especially in high school. You know, I check into the basketball games, and everybody will hold up the O and yell O. And that's, I became O. So I, I was glad. I thank my mom for that, you know. fighting since 2018 that was basically the same year where I made my mind up that I wanted to fight I, I've dabbled a little sparring here and there before but I never took it serious um took my first fight 2018 zero training um actually I did I just started training we did too but my fight was kickboxing so you know I wouldn't advise anybody to this dumb as shit um so I'm training jiu-jitsu for a couple weeks I show up to a boxing match. I get there, my weight isn't what I said it would be. And they're like, oh, you, you ever kickbox before? And I'm like, uh, no. Nah. They're like, you want to? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I had my first kickboxing match in um, 2018. Uh, it only lasted a minute. I was in the hospital. They stopped it because I had a cut over my eye and I couldn't really see out of it. Um, you know, it was a little embarrassing, but you know, I, I tried to sign up again later, and a lot of people came up to me and told me, like, how good I looked in that fight. And I was like, really? So I finally watched the footage, and I watched it, and I was like, oh, shit, I, I did stand a chance, you know. Maybe if I actually train, uh, <laughs> you know, I can actually, uh, you know, do some damage. Um, I ain't gonna lie, it's not like I didn't train. I'm, You know, I was jump roping in the living room, shadow, shadow boxing and stuff, but I didn't actually, like, really start learning martial arts until after that, um, which is also um, a, a struggle too. Most people can't make it to the gym because of money reasons or time. And at one point in time, at that time, actually, I didn't have neither one. I worked the night shift at Amazon. So I went to work when everybody went to the gym and the money I was at was just enough to pay bills. So I, I spent, I went more into that. I even, matter of fact, you know, I'm going deeper into my self here, but this is, this is my life, this is what I did. I started focusing on my money actually. And I actually, I got my CDL because Amazon will pay for schooling if you work for a year. I get my CDL, then I find a job that's giving me 70 hours, which is ridiculous. But I just did that for 11 months, grinded, paid off my debt, stacked my money, got a, a more life balancing job. And then that's where uh, I really got into the groove. and really in the beginning of 2021 and I took five fights from there and had a great training schedule, had had certain days off, even met a coach, started doing private mid work with him. I was getting out on the side and going to class, uh, you know, gyms and I felt felt like a professional fighter. I almost felt unfair, you know, it felt great, you know. And, you know, life hit again and then I kind of went through like last half of 2021 up until last summer going through some things with work life balance money and i just got back into it last month and uh and uh it feels good i don't ever i don't ever want to go back to uh just living in that 
that lifestyle or trying to accept being a normal person because I've tried and I'm I'm just not like I feel I feel weird if I'm not fighting. Um, and life is just different and people just have a little bit less respect for your time um, when you're not fighting. I mean, they don't respect my time as a fighter, but when I'm not fighting, it's way worse. People think I'm just available all the time, but at least now that I'm fighting, I love it. I always have the balls to tell people, um, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that, I can't do that. I have a fight coming up and people respect that. And, and a lot of these people, you know, they're, they're my friends and they actually come watch me fight and I appreciate them, you know? So yeah, you know, that's just the battle that goes on in my head, you know? Hydration is important is because uh, fighting is probably one of the most physical taxing sports you can think of. And because of that, you sweat a lot. Like right? you lose five to 10 pounds just in, just in the workout. I've, I've checked the scale. I've hit weights on accident that I wasn't even fighting at. And if you don't pay attention to that, you cramp up. And that, that also ain't fun. And then there's just, the, the main struggle in fighting is just staying healthy. Like, most of us know how to fight. We're, in, we're great athletes, we're in good shape. It's just injuries and sickness. It, it just, that's the battle is staying healthy. And that's that's why people, you know, take it serious. Um, I've, I've learned, I've been tweaking it for about four years, and it's four years now, just finding different things to do. And I learned what works for me is, is you know, I hate, I hate to say it, but it's not going to a, a gym every day. And I love, don't get me wrong, I love I love the gym. I love training with other fighters. And I would go every day if I could, but I, I have to go, like, I have to take days off. I have to have days where I just do, like, a slow jog. And, you know, and just I'm not breathing around other people and other people, you know, because when it comes to MMA and jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, it's not just shit like COVID. It's it's ringworm, it's staph infection, impetigo, it's all types of stuff. That's what you gotta get in the skin. Like, people don't understand, like, we've been on this whole shower before and after going to the gym and hygiene. We've been on that shit way before COVID because it, it, it literally can be a dirty game. And that's one of the things that makes it unhealthy. And then we're beating each other up too at the same time. So, and we're training hard on top of that just so we can have that athletic edge. So, like, the body, the body has to just learn how to, you know, either keep up with it or your mind has to learn how to listen to the body. And, and that's why you see a lot of older fighters doing better as they get older. And the, the younger fighters, they're always injured because they, they're full of testosterone. They, they, they don't feel shit. They just push, 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 push. And those are the younger fighters. They spend most of their 20s injured, you know in their prime too and i even had one of my coaches even told me that too when he was at his best he was always hurt um i i guess the uh, i guess normal you know which 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 is basically not normal you know you sh <laughs> you walk around a little bit crazy people are having conversations with you and you you, you could barely listen you're daydreaming um, you're a little bit easily irritated by everything that goes on around you and nervousness is hit and miss sometimes you don't have it. I feel like the more active you are, the, the more it goes away and I'm just coming off two fights from last month. So really like on a, as far as nervous, like it's way down. Like I feel, I don't feel any nerves at all um, versus like last month. So I was super nervous because, you know, I had a, a long time off before that. So as far as nervousness, I feel, I don't feel nervous, I feel great. Um, as far as life, you know, I'd be, I, I'm at, you know, <laughs> I want to kill everybody. I think everybody's against me. It's all in my head. Everybody's trying to mess up my training and sabotage me. Even though it's not true, everybody is really here to help me. Um, so that, I got that going on. Uh, I found out about the fight uh, maybe a few days ago in the last week. Um, I actually kind of, was thinking that I just wasn't going to get the fight, um, even though I told Todd I would do it, but he ended up getting the fight, uh, so that don't really make a difference. I could I could turn the switch on like that, but I was for a second just already thinking of other stuff, like I got a jiu-jitsu tournament coming up 
October 3rd, and I was about to start just training grappling, uh, but they told me this fight's gonna happen. So I'm like, cool, man, keep doing what I do, because I mainly focus on kickboxing anyways. And yeah, that's how, yeah, I feel I feel good about uh, Friday. I think, uh, I think it's gonna be a good outcome for me. Um, for some reason, I got this thing where I, I guess I can make people laugh, and a lot of it comes just from my crazy mind and through isolation, and and I love isolation. Uh, the jobs that I work don't work with people. That's when all the ideas come to my head, good stuff, brilliant stuff, and stupid, funny stuff, and I still got, like, a long list of things I haven't done yet, basically videos that I haven't made, but... With the stuff I put out already so far over the years, a lot of people are expecting me to be like the next Keenan Hill or something like that. And, and you know, it is something that I, I do enjoy doing, but I enjoy fighting right now more, so that I'm I'm more focused on the fighting. And then the funny videos is just when I have time here and there, and I make something, and, and I'm starting to realize now that I can kind of mix them. And, you know, I look at people like Jake Paul, who's actually a big inspiration to me. Like, he got famous off YouTube, and he's a good boxer now. And people don't understand that. That's because he doesn't have to go to work. He just goes to the gym and train. And, and, and I have more props to him. And so, you know, I'm thinking maybe I should put more effort into it. Um, besides the effort, I've, I did finally have one video go viral a few months ago. Um, it was just me and my friend making fun of all the different martial arts and how it would come out in a street fight. Um, it, it hit on Instagram, kind of, but then I made a TikTok finally. I didn't want to do it. I made it, and then it just took off from there. It hit 102,000 likes, a million views, and then Haymaker shared it. Dean Lister shared it. They, send it. they shared it to their Instagram, to their um, TikTok. And now we're finding other people I don't even know in other countries that are taking the video and translating it in their language too. And it's just, it's, it's blown up a lot. And you know, there's a lot of people around me who talking about, oh, you know, make money and monetize. And I'm like, I don't even know what that word means. And like, slow down, like, let me just create and build a following first. Cause I know, I know what I could do with a following. I could promote fights, I could get sponsors, but as far as building a following, I really haven't done that yet. Uh, off that one video, I got 2,700 um, followers, which is good. Those are just people I don't even know. But still, it was a million people that saw it and 100, 2,000 liked it and only that many followed. So I, I can see how this comedy thing is something you got to stay consistent with and build up over time. and. And, I, and one of the things I learned in fighting anyway is the patience. Um, you know, you don't want to jump too early and get caught. So I'm kind of the same way in life. Like, this oh comedy thing, like, it's fun to me. I just want people to see what goes on in my mind. And I put it out there. I'm, I'm not trying to quit my day job off it. I mean, everybody would love to quit their day job. But as of right now, I'm just, I'm just trying to be comfortable being myself. And, you know, it's funny I say try because people think that I just do it so well. But sometimes, you know, you sometimes you, you're told to not do this, not do that, and, you know, take this down. And, you know, and I'm just right now I'm just focused on, on being free, basically, before I start dealing with mentorship and sponsors and all that. Speaking of sponsors, uh, I might finally have one this next fight. I just talked to somebody today. Um, but that's something else, too, that I didn't go look for. I'm not looking for that like i feel like they focus on me and they'll come to me big shout out to oss mma of training me and you know we're showing the world the felix tie system um shout out to uh legion mma for letting me come and spar um on your saturday sparring sessions like you guys you guys help me a lot um shout out to my uh, future sponsor, I ain't gonna say their name yet because they're still, you know, they're still going over the, the numbers in their head. Um, what else? Uh, Y'all can follow me on Instagram at funnydope92 or TikTok, uh, Brock Leroy. Um, uh, yeah, not YouTube yet. Uh, what else? Uh, what else?